All right, we're going to talk now about masking and whether or not it prevents transmission of any virus uh, and whether or not there may be unintended harms. Because some of us have not forgotten that mask mandates were a major component of human society for a long time. And maybe that was not a good thing. It was awful. It was terrible. Let's be honest. It was the worst thing ever. All right. I'm going to give you studies. Stop and wait for the science before you... You, okay. I am science. You're not science. I'm going to give you the science on masking. Now, most of us, we sort of remember what it felt like to, you know, shame other people for masking or shame other people for not masking or observe that happening and sort of like posts about it and get yourself all riled up. It became very political. Um, and establishment politicians were very much for it. Why? Though at the time we had Fauci sort of flip flopping about it, but what was the science around it? Now, here is one of the most comprehensive studies about it that was just out this week, and it comes out of Germany from um, these are the researchers there, and it's called Possible Toxicity of Chronic Carbon Dioxide Exposure Associated with Face Mask Use, particularly in Pregnant Women, Children, and Adolescents. So, it's not a brand new clinical trial. It is a literature review. They collected all of the literature on these unmasking and carbon dioxide exposure for a very long time, and they collated it to see what did we know, when did we know it, and why did we think this about masks? What they are saying is that they can make a connection between carbon dioxide exposure, which is cause, which does happen, when someone wears a mask, and undesirable things such as testicular dysfunction, what? stillbirths, reduced motor and verbal skills for children, and overall cognitive decline for children born during the pandemic. Now, they're not saying the masks cause these things. They're saying that something happens while wearing a mask, which increases your exposure to CO2, and that prolonged exposure to CO2 has known side effects. Um, now, I saw a lot of people saying that during the pandemic and being sort of pooped on, for lack of a better word, by people and calling them anti-maskers. And this is, again, I'm, you know, in hindsight, we can really see the words that were used to throw away critical thoughts, such as anti-vax, anti-mask. Um, I will never use those words again. Uh, and you can see now why people who were saying things that science actually knew at the time were just tossed aside. They were jettisoned. Now, the authors um, are trying in this research review to answer two questions. One, do masks actually prevent transmission? And two, do masks cause unintentional harm that maybe society has ignored? Most of this is not new. Researchers have known this all along, but were not, in fact, to quest allowed to question it. In fact, recall that Dr. Fauci at the start of the pandemic said that masks were not necessary. And then now recently when he retired from his post, he says he wished he had never said that. Watch. Would you take back what you said about masks? Obviously, the guidance changed, but you, yeah. were, but you were very definitive. You said there's absolutely no reason for people to be wearing masks. Yeah, I mean, sure. If I had to do it over again, of course, I would have analyzed it a little bit better. Oh. Yeah. If he had had it all to do over again, he would have. Now, he, no, notice he says, is that the whole clip? Do we play that all the way through? That was it. Yep. That was oh, it. okay. Maybe it got. So what he says later, he says, you know, but then the guidance changed. Now, note that word. He's, it's not the science that changed. The guidance changed, meaning people in power changed what they said, but the science didn't change. It was there all along. Um, and here is what the science says, according to this German study, that no comparable standard testing of masks for viruses has been established. In an important human subject evaluation with uh, NACL aerosol representing bacterial and viral particle size range, the general filtration efficacy of surgical and N95 masks for bigger bacteria sized particles was better. But interestingly, most of the tested N95 respirators and surgical masks performed at their worst against particles approximately between uh, this 0.04 and 0.02 size, which includes the sizes 
of COVID and influenza. Indeed, some modeling and in vitro laboratory simulation studies aim to demonstrate less virus transmissions when masks are used. So we never had a conclusive study showing that masks could block out COVID and the size of that virus. Um, why weren't we discussing this louder during the pandemic when masking requirements were in place? Uh, and just to remind well, many you, of us were, you know, and sure. as someone in the chat just said, I, I don't know who, whoever just said this in the chat said, I, I was always suspicious of the fact that the masks couldn't stop a fart, but yet we could think that it would stop COVID. Did you great, smell fart through a mask? Great point. Great point. I agree with that sentiment. How strong are your farts? I don't think I ever smelled fart through a mask. Rewind the clock. Rewind the clock. Do you want to do experiments later tonight? <laughs> just do, just put on a mask right now. We don't, we, yeah. we don't need to Put on a mask right now. You said taco. It's taco night. That's what we're going to be up to. <laughs> <laughs> we'll let you know. That's why I love our chat room. The smartest people in the world. Thank you for that. Okay. Yeah, Gave tomorrow great... Natalie is going to be like, yeah, he was right. Yeah, mm -hmm. my hair will be all flat. Yeah. <laughs> that was awful. Okay. Um, I just want to remind you how far and wide these legislations reached. Uh, the authors point out that 77% of the countries in the world introduced the requirement to wear masks in public spaces to contain COVID-19 in 2020. Simultaneously, it was one of the most important ubiquitous environmental factors directly affecting human breathing. That's a big statement, right? In a world where we have pollution, from all manner of things, they are saying it was one of the most important factors affecting human breathing. Someone in our chat, David, just said, David in our chat just said, I'm pro-breathing. <laughs> like, is yeah. that funny? Yeah. I'm for I'm that, that I'm, I'm for that too. Like, we were literally almost like asphyxiating millions of people with these masks. Well, protocols. we're going to show you when we get to this data. Now, government data from the end of the year 2021 showed an estimated almost... 4.4 billion people worldwide, 58% of the world's population had been confronted with mask obligations. Now on YouTube through 2021, there has been a ban against what they call it misinformation, including, this is a quote from YouTube's terms of service, claims that masks do not play a role in preventing the contraction or transmission of COVID-19. Um, where did they get that science? Not sure, but they were comfortable in fact uh, removing a video from Senator Ron Paul, Rand Paul, Rand Paul, sorry, who had also a suspension on his channel because he did a video asking about the efficacy of masks. Uh, many channels had videos taken down. Um, now, right now, YouTube no longer has any guidance about saying whether or not masks work or not. Um, but they do say that we cannot discuss things that contradict the World Health Organization, which we are not doing right now because the World Health Organization right now in January of 2023, they updated their guidelines and this is their guidelines as it states right now, is that on wearing a mask for COVID-19, it says wearing a mask. Now, I highlighted these three words may because may does not mean they have a scientific conclusion. So they're leaving it open to interpretation. Meh, may. Why should people wear masks? Wearing a mask reduces the spread of respiratory illness within the community by reducing the number of infectious particles that may be inhaled or exhaled. These particles may be spread when an infected individual talks, sings, shouts, coughs, or sneezes. Not farts, Clayton. Um, and masks, hence masks, may provide protection to the wearer and those around them. So that is what the World Health Organization is saying. They are not saying absolutely that masks are definitive um, COVID prevention any longer. They're not saying that. And we are not, con con so then by discussing this, we are not contradicting the World Health Organization. But I do want to know um, about this world word may, because after three years and millions of people wearing masks, they are now admitting that basically they don't have science behind it. Yeah. What was the science behind having kids in band class putting like holding a saxophone where they would have a mask on and puncture a hole in the mask so that they could play the saxophone through the mask? Remember that crap? No. Remember the, the kids playing the flute? We've showed videos of these kids. I mean, it was awful. I mean, yeah, they had they had to like cut out. 
<laughs> yeah, they had, like cut out holes and they were like playing. They were like, it was ridiculous. Like, what's the science behind that crap? That is stupid. Um, or when, they had they had things over the end of the saxophone yeah. so that when you like blow through the saxophone through your mask hole, that your saxophone would then capture whatever respiratory droplets are being fired out of your saxophone hole. What gets me is when I have to wear it into the dentist office and then I take it off and I open my mouth full, you know, like, so oh, I'm glad stupid. I was I'm wearing glad they stopped that stupid a, shit. a mask from the door to this chair. So stupid. Um, you know what? I would love to see a study on all of those people that work in a hospital that wear them all day, you know? Right. Yeah. Which many of them have only just been reprieved from. Um, now, when Rand Paul was suspended for this, the New York Times pointed to this article that they wrote in which they declaratively said that masks work. They don't cite a single scientific study in this article. They just took it upon themselves to declare the debate, quote, settled. Uh, I circled that word because I find it so, like... That is really bad faith journalism. It's actually total shit journalism. The, it's, it's not settled. even an opinion The debate piece. is settled. Don't even question it. It's just junk partisan writing. And so then now on to the question of whether or not masks may have caused harm due to prolonged exposure. Um, here is from this study. It said that fresh air has fresh air has around 0.04 percent co2 while wearing masks more than five minutes bears a possible chronic exposure to carbon dioxide of 1.41 to 3.2 percent of the inhaled air although the buildup is usually within the short-term exposure limits long-term exceedances and consequences must be considered due to experimental data and then it goes on to talk about how even the u.s navy sets toxicity levels for co2 exposure at 0.8 and masks are more than double that if you wear them for even five minutes um, and here is what the study says about carbon dioxide exposure it says that humans exhale about 2.3 pounds of co2 on average per day we are not supposed to sorry that's not from this study this is just me saying that um, based on research uh, we're not supposed to breathe that back in when your respiratory system is working properly, this is what your body does with CO2. This is from a great book I read after my daughter um, had pneumonia uh, called Asthma Free Naturally. It says carbon dioxide is produced as an end product of the process of breaking down the fats and carbohydrates that you eat. And this gas is brought by your venous blood vessels to your lungs where the excess is exhaled. So you're not supposed to keep it. Crucially, part of your body's quotient of carbon dioxide is retained when you exhale and correct breathing results in the required amounts of carbon dioxide being retained in your lungs. So you see, it is a delicate balance that your body is always working to maintain. The German study showed that there is possible toxicity when you are constantly exposed to high levels of carbon dioxide. And so wearing a mask, again, doubles the acceptable levels. And this constant exposure, then they say, has known risks in laboratory animals. So what they say is that they know that lab animals exposed to high levels of CO2 have these things, testis testicular dysfunction, stillbirths, um, memory loss, verbal skill reduction, all of that kind of stuff. And here are some of the known side effects that they had already known from previous studies about this. It says there's a high risk. These are things that they had already known, that masks bear several side effects and risk. There's a high risk of improper handling when the mask is used by the general population and by children. Yes, you saw people who wore it on their sleeves who would like Put be in a restaurant elbow. and then yeah. wad it up and put it on their elbow as they're walking around. Um, that can't be good. A lack of correlation, they say, between school mask mandates and pediatric COVID-19 cases could recently be shown in a vast study which replicated the CDC study and extended it to more districts for a longer period, employing seven times as much data. And what they say is that they didn't find a relationship between mask mandates and pediatric cases. Um, and then on the bottom, I want to highlight this, that data on this 25,000 children wearing face masks for 270 minutes per day showed that 68% complained about discomfort. They had side effects, including irritability, headache, difficulty concentrating, less happiness, reluctance to go to school in kindergarten, malaise, impaired learning and drowsiness and fatigue. 
Uh, in another study, they led to breathing problems in 100 school children between 8 and 11 years of age, especially during physical exertion. Um, and despite having the lowest risk of severe disease from COVID infection, children endure the most disproportionate disruption to their lives in the most formative years during the pandemic. That we all know absolutely is true. Now, additionally, studies of guinea pigs with elevated CO2 levels do did show stillbirths and birth defects. Rats with elevated CO2 levels had learning and memory disorders and testicular disorders. Um, this is obviously very anxietizing research, especially lived in, if you lived in an area with mask mandates. Our children had to wear them to school. Our older two, the, the youngest didn't, um, for a year and a half. It was awful. All day at school. I used to get yelled at because I would I go into places where they would tell me to wear a mask and I wouldn't do it. <laughs> they would yell yeah. at me. And I would I was I was so passive aggressive about it. I'm like, oh, you're still doing that stupid shit? And I would literally say that to them. I'm like, you know that's a total farce, right? You're still doing that stupid shit? And they're like, uh, I don't like yeah. that. I feel like it's unduly yeah, well, antagonistic I'm an, I'm an on a person who's not making the rules. I'm an asshole. So yes. thank you so much for watching this segment here at Redacted. We are live every day at 4 p.m. Eastern time trying to share the stories that the mainstream media will not cover. You should also come over and join our community of Redacted Rebels over at Redacted.inc. That's our private locals community where we can share exclusive content that we simply cannot share here on YouTube. Come over and join the rebellion together right now by going to Redacted.inc. We'll see you next time.